Today we're going to mess around with some exotic math. So I've got a couple of questions here. One is the question of what it means to take the derivative of x factorial with respect to x. And the other is the question of what it means to take the factorial of the derivative operator itself. Well, the first question is relatively easy to answer using the connection between the factorial and the gamma function. So we have x factorial equal to gamma x plus 1. And the gamma function has this integral representation, that is the integral from 0 to infinity, of t to the argument, that's x plus 1, minus 1, so they just cancel out, times e to the negative t dt. So the question of differentiating the factorial boils down to just differentiation under the integral sign using the Leibniz rule. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to x of t to the x times e to the negative t dt. So the e to the negative t term is a constant for partial differentiation purposes, and we need the derivative, the partial derivative of t to the x, which is the repeated function t to the x times the natural logarithm of the base t. Okay, cool. So this is the integral that represents the derivative of the factorial function. And we can use this equation to derive several important derivatives of the factorial function. For example, if we're interested in evaluating the derivative of x factorial at x equal to 0, we're basically interested in the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times log t dt. And this integral is just a nice integral form for an important constant that is the negative euler mascheroni constant. And there are several nice values for the derivative of the factorial or the gamma function that I have evaluated in the previous Instagram post, link in the description below. And now for the other question, what does it mean to take the derivative operator and factorial it? To tackle this problem, we're going to make use of some linear algebra. We know that the derivative operator is a linear transform, so that means we can come up with some kind of matrix representation depending on the vector space we're working in. So I'm going to discuss the very simple case of the vector space V spanned by the set of basis vectors e to the x by 2 and e to the negative x by 2, which is a two-dimensional vector space isomorphic to the vector space R2. So that means we can come up with some kind of correspondence between the basis vectors of R2 and the basis vectors of V. So the basis vectors of R2 are 1, 0, and 0, 1. So this is the correspondence I'm going to use. Now to translate the operator into a matrix, note that the operator d by dx takes vectors in V onto vectors in V. And we know what these vectors look like in the space R2. So in the corresponding R2 space, we're looking for a matrix that takes vectors in R2 onto vectors in R2. And to figure all of that out, all we need to know is what happens to the basis vectors. So let's talk about the basis vector e to the x by 2. This is 1 half of e to the x by 2 on differentiation with respect to x. Now, what does this look like in the R2 space? Well, e to the x by 2 is 1, 0 whereas 1 half of e to the x by 2 is 1 half of the basis vector 1, 0, which is, of course, 1 half and 0. Okay, cool. So that's what happens to one of the basis vectors. Now for the other basis vector, e to the negative x by 2, we have negative 1 half e to the negative x by 2, and this is, of course, the basis vector 0, 1, and this, of course, translates to... 0, negative 1 half over here. Okay, cool. So that means we know exactly what the matrix D looks like. The matrix looks like 1 half, 0, 0, 1 half. Like I said, it's a very simple case, as now evident from the fact that the matrix we have is a diagonal one. And of course, we can work with more interesting cases of vector spaces that don't give off diagonal matrices. And if you work with a vector space like the space of polynomials of some degree n and less, then the matrix form you'd get would not even be diagonalizable. So yeah, those cases are pretty interesting, but they need more math in terms of lemmas and theorems on how to apply functions to matrix forms. The diagonal case is the most simple case. 
which is why I wanted to present it for a first discussion. Anyway, so the factorial of this matrix just means taking the factorial of the elements in the principal diagonal. So what is one half factorial? That would be gamma three halves and gamma three halves is gamma one half times one half and gamma one half is famously root pi. So we get root pi by two here, zero here, zero there. And negative one half factorial is gamma one half, which is again root pi. So this is the factorial of the derivative operator in our vector space V. And now let's apply this operator to the basis vectors because once you know how an operator acts on the basis vectors, you know how it acts on pretty much all the vectors in the vector space. So what is d by x, d by dx factorial of e to the x by two? Well, that would be this matrix times the matrix one, zero. And that would of course give you this vector, it's root pi by two, zero. And this would of course be root pi by two times the basis vector e to the x by two. And by similar token, applying the operator d by dx factorial onto the basis vector e to the negative x by two would give you root pi times e to the negative x by two, which is pretty interesting indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Comment down whatever interesting cases you found for the factorial of the derivative operator in other vector spaces. Thank you. See you next time.